Welcome to iLecture Online and to give us a practical overview of what we call R values which is the ratings of insulating materials that we use here in the United States I set up an example here called example 7 on heat transfer again we have a house wall outside made out of brick plywood insulating layer then we have a, a, a region between the studs of course we use two by fours they're about three and a half inches wide and either there's air in between or insulation and then we have of course on the inside of the house drywall the dry sheeting uh, that make up the inside walls and the R ratings of those various materials are listed here but before we take a look at those again let's go to the basics the amount of heat transferred across any uh, material is equal to Ka delta T over L and of course if you put the K down here it's L over K in the denominator and if there's multiple layers we write the equation like this where L over K is accounted for for each layer. Now the R values that we use is simply the L divided by K and notice that uh, the L and the K are combined into a single value. Now that happens because we know typically the thickness of these things. For example, brick is typically four inches thick, the insulation layer inside is typically three and a half inches and so forth. So we have certain R values for materials associated also with of course their thickness. Now if you look at the units of R values, <clears throat> notice the unit of R is feet squared times Fahrenheit degrees times hours divided by BTUs. That seems kind of odd, but if you flip that over, take the inverse of that, notice you have BTUs per square feet per degree Fahrenheit per hour, which means that the R rating is an indication of how many BTUs you will, you will uh, lose. And of course the BTU is 1,055 joules. So how many BTUs you will use per square foot of surface of the wall, per Fahrenheit degree difference between the inside and outside, and per hour. And of course you want to minimize that. And of course minimizing that means you want the biggest R values possible. So looking at that, you can see that the R value for a brick wall is about four. The R value for the plywood is 1.32. The R value for air is one. And the R value for the drywall is 0.45. Now, you want to add those up and if you add them all up you want the biggest R value possible for the sum of all the R values in, inside. Now notice that instead of air if you use insulation material for three and a half inches wide the R value for that alone is 10.9 so it would definitely increase the R value over our wall by quite a bit if you replace air by the insulating material. And then if you use insulating material of course in the ceiling but in the roof area between the uh, roof ceiling and the outside wall and typically you have about 11 inches of space there then you can see that if you put 11 inches of the insulation material there you have an enormous R value therefore minimizing the, the heat loss to the roof and to the ceiling tremendously. You can usually tell when you go to a cold place when there's a lot of snow and snow falls on the houses in the winter time then those houses that have a very large amount of insulation in the ceiling that snow doesn't melt because very little heat will rise up through the ceiling and, and, and therefore not melt the snow. Those houses where you see the snow readily melt off the roofs, they usually don't have much insulation or no insulation at all and lots of heat then transfers through the ceiling to the roof to the snow and melts off the snow. So usually houses that keep the snow on the roofs for a very long time are the ones that have a lot of R value into their ceilings. So hopefully this will help you next time you go to a hardware store looking for insulation material. You can understand a little bit better what we mean by R values. And again, R values are those things that go in the denominator. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the DQDT. And that's what it's all about.